I mean, imagine being the last people on Earth. Imagine all the different things you could do. Even if the air is toxic, imagine all the different things you can do. Now imagine your last time on Earth being boring. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your Everyday Nerd, the B-Sides edition. I'm your host, Zack Snyder. On the B-Sides, we cover new and trending media in the same format as your Everyday Nerd in shorter, unsponsored episodes. One of my goals this year is to watch more movies, specifically more new movies. And while there's plenty that I hope to see in theaters this year, a lot of movies these days premiere on streaming services, especially Netflix. In other words, this intro is just me preparing you for a bunch of new Netflix episodes. They're coming. We got some Netflix reviews, boys. Get ready. Get hyped. And to start this new venture into Your Everyday Nerd, I watched my very first new 2019 movie. And, uh, well, it's not bad, but it's not good either. Scientists predicted what would happen, but it was too late. IO is a science fiction movie set in a post-apocalyptic Earth where Earth's atmosphere is mostly toxic now. So humanity has left the planet to go and live on a space station near Io, one of Jupiter's moons. With all of this, there's only a few remaining humans on Earth, but we only ever see two throughout the entire film. Sam, played by Margaret Qualley, and Micah, played by Anthony Mackie. These two have one last chance to leave the Earth and head to Io, but there's something in Sam that's telling her maybe she should stay on Earth and try to adapt to the atmosphere. And this brings us into the main theme of the film, being, as humans, should we go out and explore and leave the Earth behind, or should we stay here and preserve what we have, because this is our home? It's a fairly beautiful message, and it really does make you think about life and the future. However, no really nice theme makes a good movie, when you don't have other things to back it up. Io tries to be really deep. I mean, this theme, this message that I just mentioned, is pretty deep. And then characters even quote famous philosophers like Plato. I think there was even a T.S. Eliot quote. The dialogue gets pretty heavy with this notion of humans needing to stick together. There's a whole relationship subplot where Anthony Mackie's character even talks about how important it is for everyone to find their one. It starts these deep and interesting messages and then goes, absolutely nowhere with it and that's just the tip of the iceberg here because there's only really two actors in this movie and half of them aren't good anthony mackie pretty solid throughout the film he's got some good acting there's a little bit of weird dialogue choices like you know it is what it is i was not a fan of margaret Qualley whatsoever though and it's unfortunate because for the very first 10 minutes of the film she appears as this very strong independent woman character for all we know, she's like the only human left on Earth. There's even this one scene where she starts to run out of oxygen only for her to have to like sprint to go find those supplies so that she doesn't die. It was engaging and I liked the character at the very beginning. But then when Anthony Mackie's character comes in, she literally turns into a child. She like asks these nonsense questions and like wants bedtime stories basically. I understand that Anthony Mackie is 20 years older than Margaret Qualley, so like, okay, sure, you're younger than him whatsoever, but you're still an adult. And then, not to mention, halfway through the film, I realized, wait a second, I've seen that girl before. I'll look her up. She was in the Death Note movie. And put into the fact that they end up having a relationship, it was, uh, it was kind of uncomfortable. I'll try to keep from major spoilers, but when it came to this relationship, it was the ending of the movie that really got me sitting there just befuddled because early on, Sam asks Micah to do something with her. You know what? Fuck it. Spoilers. If you don't want to hear them, go watch a different episode of Your Everyday Nerd. But like, there's no reason for you to like watch IO anyways. It's not, not worth your time. Spoilers. So like Sam basically breaks up with her long distance relationship boyfriend because he's going on some kind of space expedition. It's going to take 10 years to get there. And so she literally throws herself on Micah after he clearly states that he has a wife that's dead and he doesn't want to have sex, but then they have sex anyways. And it's like, what? So you just kind of figure there are these last two people on earth. They haven't had anybody else in their life for a while. So, you know, whatever they fall in love pretty easily. That makes enough sense. Sure. But then at the end of the movie, 
We find out that Micah is leaving for Io, and Sam has decided that she's going to stay on Earth. And also, oh yeah, she can breathe this toxic atmosphere, whatever, probably because of some experiments that they mention early in the movie, but then they don't really explain it, they don't go into depth at all about it. Anyways, the final scene is Sam on a beach with a f***ing child. In other words, when she f***ed Micah, and she said, we've got to, this dude got her pregnant, and I'm like 99% sure that this is her plan all along. So what now? Or is this child just immune to the toxic atmosphere? Is she immune to the toxic atmosphere? Are they going to build a society? Because you know what happens when you only have a mother and a child to build a society. That's disgusting. Also, is Micah going to have to pay for child support? Because he's going to be in I.O. not taking care of his kid. It's not his fault though. He didn't know he got her knocked up. So not only does this movie do things and then not go anywhere with them, but then it does these things that make no sense. And that's not even its biggest crime. Its biggest crime is that Io is boring. It's so boring. The cinematography is boring. The music might have been good, but I don't remember any of it because everything else, the sets are boring. And it's a 90 minute film. An hour and a half is not bad to sit through. I've seen Avengers Infinity War seven times, and that movie is like almost three hours long, and it feels nothing like it's runtime. But this one, I had to take a break from it because it was going absolutely nowhere. And that's why I can't recommend this movie whatsoever. The acting isn't the worst in the world, but it's also not necessarily good. The premise is interesting, but it's such a waste of potential because it tries to be this deep movie, but then it has these themes about humanity and the end of the world that just don't go anywhere. Not to mention all the other dumb stuff I said. So like, don't waste your time watching IO and instead just watch like 10 Your Everyday Nerds. Your time will be much, much better spent. But that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If for whatever reason you didn't like the video, you can hit that dislike button. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts about IO are if you've seen it. Let me know what other new Netflix movies I should cover for the B-Sides episodes. Go ahead and subscribe for more Your Everyday Nerd, and I will see you tomorrow.